I remember when I first heard the term technical debt, I just didn't understand what those words meant. Even after I got an explanation, my brain was basically refusing to understand. I think the challenge was that I was overthinking what it is and obviously that wasn't helping. When I saw the word technical, I immediately thought, well, it will be way too difficult for me to understand it anyway because I'm not a developer and probably this is very technical for developers only. But this is not actually the case. The concept of technical debt is actually not as difficult as it sounds and it totally makes sense even when applied to non-technical work. So in this video I'll explain in simple terms what technical debt means with plenty of examples including some non-technical ones. Okay, so the basic definition of the technical debt in IT is, in software development or any other IT field, technical debt is the implied cost of future reworking required when choosing an easy but limited solution instead of a better approach that could take more time. Or in other terms, if we're not actually applying it to IT because Yes, it can be used in other situations just when we are using technical debt as a business measure. We can say technical debt or tech debt is the implied cost incurred when businesses do not fix problems that will affect them in the future. Accruing technical debt causes existing problems to get worse over time. The longer debt builds up, the more costly it becomes to rectify. I think the key point to highlight here is that if the debt is not fixed, it will bite us in the ass in the future and we don't know when exactly. Let's make this definition a little bit more tangible with a real life example. And for this, I will be using a metaphor of cleaning a house. As you live in a house or an apartment, you use it and you accumulate garbage. You eat, that makes dirty dishes, you sleep, your bed is unmade. As you walk around, you bring in dust and crumbs and other stuff. You misplace objects, put your clothes all in the wrong places and so on. If you go around and clean everything right after you use it, then your house will be squeaky clean all the time. But... Ain't nobody got time for that! So maybe you decide to do deep cleaning every weekend. That is still fine because you haven't accumulated as much stuff to clean. So maybe it'll take you an hour every time to clean the whole house. But what if you don't clean up after yourself every day and you don't clean every weekend, not even every month? And now you have your parents coming over next day. Now the situation in your house may be so dire if you haven't cleaned in ages that it's going to take you days to clean everything. Every time you say, I don't have time to clean right now, you are accumulating some cleaning debt. If you try to fix it right away, it doesn't take as much time, but the more garbage you accumulate, the harder it is to use your house. Now, every time you want to sit to have lunch, you need to move stuff around to free some space on the table, like one of those hoarders episodes, if you know what I mean. You are spending your time fighting the cleaning debt accumulated in your house. So think of dirt and garbage accumulated in a house as a metaphor for technical debt. So what is technical debt in IT? Now that we have a good understanding of the concept of the tech debt, let's look at some real life examples. The first and the easiest example would be small bugs and defects that we decided not to fix. And I'm not talking about major or breaking bugs, just minor things that we probably should fix, but we don't have time for this right now. But tech debt is not necessarily just the bugs and defects that exist in your product. There's more to it. Another one is lack of documentation. For example, support documentation or user manuals or release notes or as simple as comments in the code and technical documentation that can be used internally by developers. We may not need this documentation right now immediately, but in the long run, it will be more difficult to build new features and provide customer support without it. Some more technical examples of tech debt would include things like complex code, lack of automation, or unit tests, duplicated code or modules, hard-coded variables, lack of naming conventions in functions and variables, 
and so on. In the moment, it may save the team some time, which will allow them to complete something faster. For example, if they don't need to write unit tests as they write their code, it will take them less time to do so, but later on, the lack of unit tests will make it harder to test their work. It will become a burden the longer the team waits to fix the tech that as they'll need to work around it when working on new functionality. So creating tech that saves you time in the moment, but wastes much more of your time in the long run. What happens if you don't pay your debt and create more of it? So let's look at another real life example. And in this case, we will be taking a loan. So you take a mortgage from a bank for $500,000. We'll simplify our calculations here. Say your monthly payments are $3,000, where $1,500 is the interest, and the other part is the capital payments for the loan itself. Some time passes and you decide to invest in another property. So you take out another loan for $500,000 with the same monthly payments. You still haven't paid your original debt and now you're taking on more. Now you pay $3,000 of interest and $3,000 of capital payments on your loans every month. If you keep taking more new loans without paying the old ones, your monthly payments for them all will keep increasing. And at some point, you may no longer be able to pay off the debt itself and only be able to pay the interest. Or not be able to pay anything at all. And of course, you'd have zero money left to use on anything else. However, the bank will stop giving you money at some point because they would be able to analyze how likely you are to repay it, and if it's not looking good, they probably wouldn't take the risk. Imagine if there was no bank to stop you from lending more money. This is exactly what happens with technical debt. The challenge with technical debt is that no one really takes the time or knows how to assess the negative effects of tech debt on the teams and the product. Many teams are being pushed to produce more new features instead of fixing the debt, because that's what the business needs right now. And under pressure, they may be even encouraged to produce more tech debt to save time. At some point, the debt will get so bad that the team would only be able to make interest payments, aka fight the technical debt instead of repaying it or using their time on building new features. So how do you show the tech debt to the business side, the people who are making decisions on what you should be working on? Of course, tech debt is easily understood by the developers as they live with it every single day, but it is difficult to actually show it to the business side. So if you have a product owner who is not technical, they may not understand the implications. It may be the same with stakeholders who are laser focused on business value delivery and don't see why the team should waste their time on fixing tech debt. To all of these people, tech debt is invisible. So the solution is simple. You need to make it visible. The number one mistake many development teams do is that they just state the tech debt in tech language and hope that it will be prioritized by the business side. That is not enough. Same as you would expect a product owner to explain product backlog items to the team in detail, developers need to explain the tech debt in the language of the people who are listening. Of course, tech debt doesn't bring direct value to the customers or stakeholders, but it can help reduce risk, wasted effort, wasted money, and so bring value to the company itself. Say your team has an old service solution that they use in the product that needs to be updated. If you say just that, we have a service solution in the product that needs to be updated, you might get a response from the business side that will say, well, the service works, right? So why should we bother updating it right now? And here's where you need to provide more business-oriented details. In this case, here's what you can say. If we don't update the service now, we don't know when exactly we'll have to switch because the service will stop being supported by our vendor at some point, but we don't know when. This can happen during an extremely important release window, which means that we won't be able to deliver anything at all. In addition, if we are pushed to update it last minute, we'd have to update 
everything associated with the service at once, which will take us uh, two months where we won't be able to deliver any new functionality or fix any bugs. If we start the update now, we can do it incrementally without blocking other development. Well, this will minimize the risk and save us a lot of time in the future. This immediately starts making sense. This kind of explanation can be understood by non-technical people. You can see the value, you can see the risk, potential loss of money and potential loss of customers if we don't do it right now. It just provides enough details that can help the product owner and the stakeholders to prioritize this tech item against functional requirements because the value of it is now clear. How do you reduce technical debt that already exists in your product? Many teams struggle with tech debt from the very start. Technology evolves really quickly, making a lot of the recent solutions no longer appropriate. So whether the team likes it or not, tech debt will be accumulating from time to time, which means that you always need to prioritize fixing it on an ongoing basis. The DevOps Handbook recommends to dedicate a minimum of 20% of development time to tech debt. The way you can do it is by planning for it in advance every sprint. Consider that your team's capacity is 80% of the total sprint and keep the rest, the 20%, for technical debt. That way the team will be able to pay down the technical debt continuously without the need to constantly fight for their prioritization of it. The product owner can also leave developers to select the most appropriate items to work on if they're not very technical or having trouble prioritizing non-functional work. And by they here, I mean the product owner. You should also use the golden rule of camping to live it better than you found it, which in IT language would usually refer to refactoring code as you work on it. So how do you document technical debt? What I often see in teams is that developers are aware of the technical debt in the product, but they do not document it in the product backlog or anywhere else. So it all stays in their heads as they wait for an opportunity to insert that tech debt work into their regular sprints. But because there is no way to review or prioritize it, it's pretty much impossible to plan for it, which means that the team will rarely actually find time to work on reducing technical debt and will probably be mostly fighting it when it hits them in the face. That's why developers should spend some of their refinement time on documenting the tech debt. It doesn't mean that every single thing has to be in the product backlog as we don't want to overcrowd it, but having a place where all of the information is documented for future use is essential. And then when the team is planning for a longer period of time, they can take that information and put it as high priority items into the product backlog to make it visible to stakeholders too. One more useful strategy you can use to reduce technical debt is your definition of done or the DOD for short. You see, the DOD makes it clear what the minimum quality that you accept in your product is. And this may include some items that otherwise could become technical debt. For example, lack of automated testing may be combated by adding a certain percentage of automated testing created into your definition of done. That way the team would need to do it before they can call something complete. It will probably take more time for every product backlog item they're working on to be fully done, but it's kind of like working on catching your tech debt before it is even created. In addition, the team will be able to immediately plan for that work before it even starts in their sprint planning because they would need to account for that work in their estimations. I think that the definition of done is such an important and kind of an easy way to help you reduce technical debt that I think it's the perfect next stop for you. So if you need any help with understanding the definition of done or help in creating it with your team, then watch this video where I explain the key concepts behind the definition of done. And I'll see you in the next video.